So I don't have any fancy slides, uh, but my talk will be about uh, getting started with Cloud Cannon. So when I started Firehose, um, I, I'm kind of the Jekyll guy. <laughs> I launched a lot of Jekyll conversations when I started. And, and Jekyll is really great, and we use it for the community site, and, and we've taught it. And I've done lightning talks on it and to, to beat down everything. My personal site is written in Jekyll. A lot of sites are written in Jekyll. GitHub nat uh, natively supports Jekyll, so you can launch static websites. Um, but the big problem with Jekyll is that it is a pain for anybody outside of being a developer to update to maintain, to do anything of the sort. So um, I wanted to start working with freelance clients. I wanted to start building websites, but I didn't want to have to be maintaining them all the time. So I was looking for uh, content management systems. Number one thing for content management systems is obviously WordPress or Squarespace or Wix or anything like that. Those aren't great in WordPress is PHP and I didn't want to learn PHP, so I sought out a content management system for Jekyll, and that's what I found with Cloud Cannon. So um, I'll go over it. It's super straightforward. Everybody see this? So this is Cloud Cannon's landing page. Um, like I said, it's super, super simple. Um, it's just a content management system for Jekyll static sites. It makes life super simple. Um, the pricing is, was the biggest thing for me in comparison to WordPress. Um, for the basic, it's $25 uh, per user per month, which for personal site is a little on the heavy end if you're just doing one site. But what was great about it is you can have unlimited sites on it. So if you are doing this for freelance work, you can sell hosting right into it. You can charge $25 a month or $15 a month or $10 a month, and you can basically just profit off of uh, doing hosting because you can have unlimited amount of websites on your Jekyll platform. There are some limitations on what you can do, uh, the white labeling stuff. So basically I'll say this, you know, if you send out a link to somebody, I'll say, you know, this link was sent through Cloud Cannon versus your personal website or your web agency site or what have you. Um, but if you get enough clients, you can you can quickly up your up your uh, tier here. So pricing is pretty pretty expensive comparatively to WordPress in some scenarios if you're going to do it on your own. Um, but it's it's worth it if you're doing multiple clients. So. It is actually very easy to use. Um, this is actually my personal website. It is hosted on Cloud Cannon, and that is right here. So it's all built in Jekyll, and you'll have this neat little file browser so you can go through and look at everything you have on here. What's kind of cool about it is you can go in and you can actually edit it right from Cloud Cannon. But what makes it really powerful is because I don't want to mess up my site. I'm going to add something. So uh, super simple to hook it up to your um, GitHub. So I set up a repo earlier. So you just create a new site, connect to your GitHub. There's my Jekyll theme. It will download the files and import everything. You'll see over here it's syncing and building up your site. And then if you want to launch it, you can look at what it says. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward, makes life super easy. What's really cool I found about it is that you can make things editable. So you can go into this landing HTML, and if uh, this is the title, if I add editable, which I already did earlier, I can go into my editor, click on this, Save it, and then it'll start syncing and rebuilding. It's 
Let's refresh. And you got to change. So this is really cool, not only from a developer perspective, but from a client perspective, because you can add users to this and invite people to use it. So your clients can come in, and wherever you've specified it's editable, they can come in, change the content of this, and, and that's, that's all they have to do. They don't have to call you up. They don't have to get you to log in, spend your time. You don't have to charge them maintenance fees to update the code on a regular basis. Makes life super simple. And then you can go into collections, just like you would in any Jekyll site. You can go into posts. You can add, you know, if you have a blog on here, you can add add a new post, and this is what, this makes life really easy. So now you don't have to write it, you know, open up your text editor, write a new blog post, upload it to GitHub, then you don't have, and then get it all working and making sure everything's working. You can just come right in here, you can publish the post. Make sure it's synced up. And there you go. Really simple. So that's kind of the broad interview uh, overview of Jekyll. Um, makes things really nice. Makes things really editable. You can go in and you can share it. You can add um, domains, authentication, so you can add user accounts in here. So you can add your client's user in there and they can come in and edit it. If you upgrade to the agency plan, you can set permissions so they can't edit everything just like you would with WordPress. You would set certain levels of, of administration. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, when I first started using this, it's just super simple. And then if you go through, um, let's see here. Which I think I have it open, but the stupid things in my way. And if you go in your code, and it's actually updating and syncing with Jekyll on a regular basis. So whenever you make a change, changes right in GitHub, it syncs, it uploads, it does all that stuff for you. So you don't have to do pull requests. You don't have to make sure everything's working. You don't make sure you're on master when everything's changed. Um, there's very little maintenance in this. I've had zero issues with my personal site. Um, the uptime for it's great. Uh, the biggest downside I've seen to it is, is the pricing. And that's not even that horrible when, when you um, want more than one site on there. And you can have as many as you want, so it's, it's brilliant. So that's kind of it. I mean, there isn't too much about it. And you can go in, you can edit whatever site you want. You can upload your stuff. Um, it depends on how you write your code. So like, uh, and they don't have any file limits either, which is really nice. So I can store all my photos on here. Um, Go thin in here, edit the actual file names, add thumbnails and stuff like that. So you obviously have to build out your first Jekyll site and then go from there. But beyond that, it's plug and play. It makes life easy. Very, very cool. Does anybody have any questions? I think the syncing to GitHub is kind of the thing that I think is the coolest. The fact that it oh, yeah. makes the commit and it just, so you have the code backed up. So it's not like you have all the code there. It's not like you have to worry about sort of like the, the changes on top. Um, so even if you stop using Cloud Cannon because of whatever reason, it's not like you lost all of the work that you've done in it. It's really cool. Right. That's what I really liked about it. It doesn't pigeonhole you into it and you don't have to, you don't have to sit there. You don't have to back things up. You don't need to make sure that you have an active backup on your, you know, on your development machine or whatever. Um, and if the client screws things up somehow, um, which is very difficult because I tried doing it to act like a client before I wanted to start putting freelance clients on onto this platform, I tried to break things and I tried to make things go wonky and I just I couldn't. But if you do, all you have to do is go to GitHub and revert back to a previous commit and you're golden again. You have no issues with it, which is super nice. Um, the support team's really good. 
Uh, their Twitter response is awesome. They're in New Zealand, so there's about a 6 to 12 hour delay if you need anything immediately. Uh, but they've been very good to answer questions. Um, they do a Jekyll remote comp, which is a bunch of, it's a conference remote. It's all, it's all screen share. Um, and they do it every year and they have a ton of information on, on what's happening in the Jekyll world on their platform. And um, yeah, it's starting to grow in popularity. I've talked to some of the, they've got um, case studies and I've actually reached out to some of the people who use it and, and they've all been super happy with it. And I mean, when you're looking at Netflix and engine yard being on there, and using Cloud Cannon as updating their static sites, I'd say you're in pretty safe hands. But I reached out to both these, the Brandon Setter and this digital agency, and, and asked them you know, how it was dealing with clients and everything like that, and they said it's been super easy. And, it, and we were talking a little bit earlier about WordPress, and it, it can get kind of confusing interface is kind of confusing for somebody who doesn't understand what's going on where I've found that if you set it up right and train your people right with cloud can it makes life very easy it's very user-friendly and nobody really has too many questions really cool when you say uh, you you set it up right or we're, you know working with a client do you have like a do like a screen share, like a half hour, hour, you send them documentation, like how would you hand it off to them? I would hand it off like I would hand off any, any client. You know, you, when you're done with a job, you go over it and it doesn't matter what you're doing and especially in consulting and this is what I do with my regular IT clients too is I'll sit down with them, go over what we did, uh, how the new feature works and then uh, simple steps on how to use it. And then typically I'll do, um, like one month of free support in a way. So obviously you can show somebody how to do something and 30 seconds later, they're going to completely forget how to do it. I mean, I'm that way. You can show me how to do something and there's a good chance I'll remember, but if I don't touch it for a month, which if, unless you're actively updating your site's content regularly, you're not touching it. Uh, that's kind of the whole point is you don't want to have to touch it. Um, so if they call you up a month later and like, oh, I got to update this content, but I don't remember how, or, you know, you can just walk through them. But I do, uh, if it's any client that isn't in my general area, I typically do like remote desktop sessions, kind of like screen sharing sessions where I'll walk them through the whole process. And if they have questions, I let them click around and see, Sometimes you don't, if you're just showing somebody, they don't really know. So I kind of force them to use it themselves and then I'll walk them through, but make them click the buttons. It seems to help a lot. Awesome. Good stuff. Cool. Looks really cool. I kind of want to play with it now. It's too bad that it's 25 bucks a month. Kind of there, a, do they have a free? There's, a, there's a free tier, free plan, I so believe. You, so, so you can experiment with it uh, before you actually pay them. Uh, there's a 30 day free trial. Cool. So, uh, and $25 a month. If you have a bunch of stuff on there, like I said, it's not really that expensive. If you think about it, um, like I have for my freelance stuff, I've got a couple of family businesses that I helped out and I threw them all on there and I charged them, you know, I think I charged them $15 a month for hosting. It covers my costs for, for cloud cannon and anything over, two sites, it's paying for the hosting costs of it right now. Yeah, that's awesome. Super cool stuff. Hey, Colin, I have a question. Have you looked into any alternatives? Are there any, is there anything out there like this? And uh, There is a company. They just reached out to me on Twitter, or they added me on Twitter. Um, I don't remember their name. Let me look it up quick. Uh, but they just started doing it as well. Um, I didn't dig into it much, but uh, it seems very similar. The pricing was a little bit more expensive. I think that's why I didn't really jump into it. Um, I'll look for it. Uh, actually, I think I found it. I don't know. I'll look for it. I'll, I can get back to you. But it seems to be growing in popularity because so many people use Jekyll and with GitHub, you know, 
being able to store your sites there. It just is kind of the natural progression. So I'll get you a link for that site. I just I don't remember when they added me, so I'll have to look. Sweet, cool, thanks. I'm looking at the product hunt page for Cloud Cannon now. Putting that in the chat. Some interesting discussion about it. Well, cool, good stuff. Um, thanks for the talk, Colin. That was really great. No problem.